Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 FI23 earnings conference call of Sera Sanitary Wear Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mayank Vaswani from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Neera. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the earnings call for Sera Sanitary Wear Limited to cover the Q4 and FI23 earnings, which were announced yesterday. We have with us on the call today the management team comprising Mr. Ayush Bagla, Executive Director, and Mr. Vikas Kothari, CFO of Sera Sanitary Wear. We will start with brief opening remarks from the management, following which we will open the floor for Q&A. A quick disclaimer before we begin, some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a detailed note in this regard is contained in the results documents that have been shared with all of you earlier. I would now like to turn the call over to Mr. Ayush Bagla for his opening remarks. Good morning, everyone. The earnings for the quarter ended 31st, March 2023, were adopted by the Board of Directors yesterday, 10th May 2023. The earnings documents have been released to the stock exchanges. During the quarter gone by, we continued to witness strong demand for our products as the overall replacement demand remained positive with consumers continuing to spend on home upgradation and improvement. Sarah's product and design emphasis allows it to focus on the B2C segment where it can truly exhibit pricing power. Over the last two years, all efforts have borne fruit to decouple Sarah's revenue growth from fluctuations in interest rates and housing demand, thereby insulating it from cyclicality. We have reported strong top-line growth. Financial year 23 revenues are higher by 24.6% on a basis and Sarah's revenue growth has been 3x of the industry growth rate. More importantly, our focus on enhancing the quality of revenues is reaping dividends. The top line increase is driven by a higher share of premium and high margin products. Share of premium products in the incremental turnover is higher than the blended top line. This has aided in further expansion of margin. The gross margin increased from 52.77% in FY22 to 54.25% in FY23, and the EBITDA margin has increased from 16.66% in FY22 to 17.59% in FY23. Our stated objective was to increase our annual EBITDA margin by 50 to 75 basis points each year. We have surpassed our stated objective as the increase in the EBITDA margin in financial year 23 has been almost 100 basis points, despite advertising spend in the year increasing from 32 crores in FY22 to 57 crores in FY23. The industry has traditionally followed an orientation of price increase as a regular response to overcome cost pressure. At Sera, we have responded differently with the objective to deploy multiple levers to protect and enhance our margin. These include productivity and yield increases in the manufacturing processes, cost optimization, product mix enhancement through higher share of new and higher value added products, thereby limiting our reliance on price increases. As a result, we are well placed to capitalize on market share gains made over the last two years. At present, our manufacturing facility continues to function at high utilization levels. During the quarter, the sanitary wells plant capacity utilization was 115%. In faucet wells, the capacity utilization was at 118% during Q4 FY23. The faucet wear expansion program to take capacity to 4 lakh pieces per month commenced from July 2022. The enhanced production is scheduled to go on stream in July 2023 
and in a staggered manner will increase monthly production to 4 lakh pieces per month by March 2024. We expect to complete the project in time and well within the cost of 69 crores. The product mix planned is colored SKUs, water turn SKUs, PVD SKUs, and a few more SKUs that can be taken in from outsourcing partners. During FY22, China imports were 69 crores or 5% of sales. In FY23, China imports were 55 crores or 3% of sales. Sarah was already one of the lowest users of products made in China and with availability of manufacturing infrastructure in-house, the percentage of Chinese imports to sales has been continuously declining. In a business which is brand driven, the fulcrum of success is manufacturing quality and plant efficiency. With regard to capacity expansion for manufacturing of sanitary wear, a fully aggregated land parcel in Gujarat, historically owned by a single owner, has been shortlisted and the company is currently undertaking due diligence. We expect title documents to be executed and other approvals over the next six months. During Q4 FY23, no price hikes were undertaken. Our peer group companies increased price, prices in October and November 2022 while Sarah did not. During 2021 and 2022, many price hikes were undertaken, which were all a demonstration of pricing power. Currently, we are capitalizing on the market share gain over the last two years. In sanitary wear, raw material like China clay, feldspar, POP, and the glazing recipe did not have a material price movement. Zinc went down by 13%. In faucet wear, brass prices increased by 5% in Q4 and 10% during financial year 23. Despite changes in input costs, our increasing plant efficiency ensured stable gross margins in Q4 FY23 of 53.26% and in Q4 FY22 of 53.47%. For the 12 months, gross margin has increased from 52.77% to 54.25% with no increase in product price. Due to availability of gas from isolated wells near our plant, the pricing of gas from Gale continues to remain below market and will remain so in the future. Price has remained almost stable at around 35 rupees per cubic meter in December 2022 and in March 2023, it was 36 rupees per cubic meter. Normally, Gale supplies 50% of Serra's gas needs. However, in Q4 FY23, Gale provided 65% of the gas requirement of the sanitary well business. Sabarmati gas's pricing went down from 67 rupees per cubic meter in December 22 to 58 per cubic meter in March 23 supplying 35% of the gas needs of the plant for Q4. Post April 23, a price reduction has been carried out by Gale from 36 rupees to 31 per cubic meter and by Sabarmati from 58 to rupees 41 per cubic meter. The Q4 weighted average cost of gas is 43 rupees, much lower than industry. Gas costs constitute 2.68% of Serra's top line. The retailer loyalty program that was launched by Sera in Q1 FY23, which has now almost completed 12 months. More than 14,000 retailers have uploaded 1.46 lakh invoices. The feedback received from retailers has helped us in understanding the consumer's changing demands, geographical segmentation of SKUs, and evolution of the rewards program to retailers. Besides standardizing invoices, of the total retail sales of 1,042 crores in FY23, more than 339 crores of sales, which is 33% of overall retail sales in sanitary wear and faucet wear, have become 
eligible to receive rewards through this program. The company's ability to tweak trade practices, trade pricing, and ability to steer the direction of the dealer and retailer equation have all undergone a sea change. We have also seen an improvement in multi-brand retailers who have undertaken various initiatives to sell their products. After the success of the retailer loyalty program, a similar program was launched for plumbers across India. Sarah had been conducting training workshops for many years now, imparting installation and product knowledge to plumbers. A new program where rewards are provided to plumbers who recommend and facilitate the sale of Sarah products is now active from 1st May 23. The program communications include program posters at retailers and a mix of communication channels which includes SMS, phone calls, creatives and in-person meetings by the sales and marketing team. In Q4 FY22, 104 new products were introduced. New products launched in the past three years constitute 34% of Sarah's top line in Q4. Our highest ever advertising spends were achieved in financial year 23 of 57 crores. Sarah's share of voice was lower than its share of market, and now its increase in advertising spends its share of voice is getting closer to its share of market. Publicity spends, which were 7 crores in Q4 FY22, were increased to 24 crores in Q4 FY20. Despite a 340% increase in quarterly advertising and publicity expenses, there was no major impact on EBITDA and PAC margins. Population 7 thirds or 17 lakhs and above which are tier one cities have 31% of sales. Population centers of three lakhs to 17 lakhs, which are tier two cities have 22% of sales. And population centers below three lakhs of population are tier three cities with 47% of sales. We can now go over the financials. Revenues from operations in Q4 FY23 was 530 crores versus 439 crores in Q4 FY22, an increase of 21%. EBITDA, excluding other income, was 85 crores in Q4 FY23 versus rupees 82 crores in Q4 FY22, an increase of 3%. The gross margin has remained almost stable. It is currently at 53.26% in Q4 FY23 against 53.47 in Q4 FY22. PAT was at 63 crores in Q4 FY23 versus 52 crores in Q4 FY22, an increase of 21% YOI. EPS for Q4 FY23 was 48.39 versus 40.04 in Q4 FY22. For Q4 FY23, 53% of the top line was from sanitary wear, 35 from faucet wear, Tiles represented 11% and wellness 1%. On a YOI basis, sanitary wear revenues registered an increase of 18%. Faucet wear revenues increased by 29%. Tiles increased by 14% and wellness increased by 15%. The sanitary wear and faucet wear verticals remain the bedrock of the business with a contribution of 88% to Sarah's overall revenues. The classification of overall sales in Q4 FY23 was 43% in the premium category, 31% in the mid category, and 26% in the entry category. Inventory days in Q4 FY23 were 77 days compared to 73 days in Q4 FY22. Receivable days in Q4 FY23 were 32 days versus 35 days. Payable days in Q4 FY23 were 40 days against 49 days in Q4 of FY22. Therefore, net working capital days in Q4 FY23 was 69 days versus 59 days in Q4 of FY22. This number is around the optimum number of inventory days that Sarah has been making efforts to achieve for many quarters now. In this quarter, availability of products 
In short, there was no element of lost sales. This is the eighth straight quarter with no element of lost sales. In the current year, the capex budget other than the brownfield faucet wear expansion and the proposed greenfield sanitary wear expansion program is at 25 crores, of which 20 crores was spent in the last 12 months and 17 was spent in Q4. As on 31st March 2023, our cash and cash equivalent stood at 687 crores against 580 crores in March 2022, an increase of 107 crores or 18%. Positive cash flow for Q4 financial year 23 has been 62 crores as compared to 54 crores YOY. Positive cash flow for financial year 23 has been 219 crores versus 164 crores in FY22, an increase of 34%. Internal accruals are being used to fund the two CapEx programs and we would also retain the flexibility to use some part of the cash and cash equivalent is required. No debt raising or equity dilution is planned or required for both the capacity expansions. The board of directors yesterday have recommended a dividend of rupees 50 per share, which is 1000% of the face value per share. In conclusion, I would like to say that due to the combination of internal factors, production throughput maximization, brand salience, and design differentiation, as well as the macros of home improvement, Sera would be able to monetize all the growth drivers that present themselves. Sera's growth plan remains intact as it plans to expand capacities and to monetize rising demand. After taking a few years to break the 1250 to 1350 crore, top line band in FY22, Sarah touched a top line of 1446 crores. In FY23, Sarah has reached a top line of 1796 crores, a growth of 24.5% over FY22, and a growth of 49.4% over FY21. This trajectory is three times the industry growth. It increases Sarah's market share and pricing power. Achieving the magic number of 1796 crores has reaffirmed our confidence of achieving the targeted doubling of turnover within 40 months from March 22. I would now request the moderator to open up lines for Q&A. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Praveen Chai from Prabhupada Ladder. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, taking my question. The first question is sir, uh, on the, uh, you know, uh, in-house and the outsourcing contribution in the sanitary and the closet segment. How much that for a quarter? So for the quarter in sanitary wear, outsourcing was 60% of uh, overall sales and in-house manufacturing was 40%. In faucet wear, the outsourcing was 49% and in-house was 51%. For the year in sanitary wear, outsourcing was 59% and in-house was 41. And for the year in faucet wear, outsourcing was 52 and in-house was 48. Okay. Uh, the next question is uh, uh, related to the mid-segment contribution as well as the, your faucet contribution also on the increase. Uh, in the last uh, six quarter, I'm continuously seeing. So, uh, is it a fair to assume your faucet segment is largely in the mid segment of a uh, uh, you know product segment? And uh, if you also give some indication on the margin differential in the sanitary and the faucet. So, Pranav, the thing is, I just give you some statistics uh, to add more color to the answer. In sanitary wear, our composition of sales is entry level 25%, mid is 17 and premium is 57. In faucet wear, 
entry is 26, mid is 48, and premium is 24. But that's not the reason why you are seeing faucet wear growing. The unorganized to organized shift in sanitary wear has more or less played out. Whereas in faucet wear, it is nowhere near played out. And the unorganized market in faucet wear continues to be 5,000 crores. That market is fully available over the next many years. And uh, the second aspect is uh, Sarah's Lexis faucet wear market share is uh, double digit. It is the, the second largest player in the industry, but it's incremental market share. So the share of the growth that Terra is monetizing is one and a half to two times its incremental market share. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, any margin differential between these two products? See, normally we don't uh, split the margins between our uh, various uh, businesses. We just uh, focus on the uh, blended number. And the reason for that is uh, we don't want to give out uh, our uh, pricing and uh, margin strategy to the market. All right. Okay. Thank you. And the, uh, the question on the growth, the way forward, because this year you have delivered a very, uh, very high growth in both the segments around 27 28% and overall addition of uh, incremental sales in the range of around 350 odd crore. Uh, what's your guidance for a 24, 25? See, again, uh, I'd like to focus on the, you know, overall larger picture that we had painted in uh, March and April 22 of reaching a run rate of 2,900 crores by September 25. That required a CAGR of 17-18%. We have achieved much more than that. So now most of the investors and uh, people in the financial community are calling us and telling us that that aim of 2,900 by September 25 is a very conservative target. So if you just work backwards from that number, we'll need to add about 350 or crores of top line every year, which we have delivered this year. And going forward, that will be the trajectory. Great, sir. And the last question, sir, related to your advertising budget. So this year, definitely, there is a good jump in that. So is there any one-off because you had a new brand investors as well, or that will continue on the yearly basis the way forward? Normally, the spends were three and a half to four percent of top line, and the manner in which top line is increasing, uh, that number will, will remain between four and four and a half percent of top line. But the absolute number will increase in uh, relation to the top line, and the benefits of this uh, expense in Q4 and during FY23 is both in the short term and in the medium term. So we are seeing a difference in. Uh, Pricing power and premiumization of our products. Okay, great. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vijay Kedia from Kedia Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, IOC. Uh, this is Vijay Kedia. Thank you very much. And congratulations for these wonderful numbers. Uh, this has really surprised us, at least me, to me. And uh, I just want to understand one thing from you. Uh, uh, one thing I would like to tell you that ever since we have joined the company, the shape and size of the company's, company has really changed dramatically. And in various occasions, whenever I met your competitors, I was told that you have taken some really out of the box decisions in the last two years. And uh, your competitors, competitors and me both were skeptical whether they are going to bring positive results for the company or not. But actually, you have uh, proved us wrong. And I hope in the future also you will prove us wrong. So whatever you have done differently than others, I just have one simple question. That maybe the deficiency of your competitors had also played uh, an important role, if not a significant role, but little bit of a role in your numbers or in your growth. So I just want to understand from you that... Uh, Suppose if they did, and they are, they all of them are very strong, capable, and compatible. So what would happen if they will also strike, uh, striking back, which I am sure, because most of the problems like gas mess and all are behind us. So they will also start recovering. So where would you stand out in uh, that circumstance? Please. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Mr. Kedia, for uh, taking time to attend the call and also participating. You see, this is uh, entirely uh, entire team effort by Sarah 
and right from the shop floor to uh, absorbing new technologies is increasing new products so i'll just give some background you know new products in the industry are 10 percent of sales for the industry as a whole and for sera they were 22 24% of sales now they are 34 to 39% depending on which quarter you look at these are all new sales which were not previously available but are you know incremental sales at much higher margin so all around uh, uh, the sera team has delivered and uh, it's a testimony to their execution skill so as far as competitive intensity is concerned uh, competitive intensity whether from the large indian players or mnc players or large building material companies was always there and uh, we expected to keep on getting fiercer but uh, we have the both the bandwidth in terms of products manufacturing capability technological expertise to meet that challenge and not only is the consumer evaluating us at every step but even retailers dealers we get a lot of feedback from them we execute accordingly so those are some of the levers and uh, there were a few concerns about the company 5 6 years ago but the governance level in the company would be at par with the best companies uh, of corporate india the really blue chip company so those are things that uh, i think uh, investors have really appreciated and in companies debt free high cash decisions have all been uh, roc accretive over the last many years those are the things which have made the company perform in the way it has over the last few years so other than that i can only say that going forward we want to maintain the same growth trajectory both in top line and bottom line as well as offerings to the consumer so ultimately the validation by the consumer results in all the financial metrics being met yeah okay thank you just the last one point only 687 crore lying in the safe instrument when are you going to utilize that fund in some low risk and high return kind of ventures so we are uh, currently just uh, working on our brownfield expansion in faucet ware and uh, the greenfield expansion in sanitary ware other than that uh, there is no uh, current uh, capex that is lined up if there is a good opportunity in organic the company will definitely evaluate it but other than that you know the company has been very conservative and that's one of the reasons uh, for its success Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I request all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Akshay Chheda from Canada Rubber Co Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. We yeah, are so so sir. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Just one question, so sir. If we see the gross margin. So in Q2 it was a good number of around 55, 55 half. But then if we see the last two quarters, it has cooled off to around 53.3 percent. So so what is it that is is it the raw material which is hurting us or how should we see it? Because on one side if we see raw materials is benign and even if we are improving the product mix, so then how should we look at the gross margins going forward? If uh, if you will go to cherry pick one number from one quarter then i could also give you the um, baseline of gross margin which has always been between 48 and 50% of the last many years we are 300 basis above that currently for the quarter and also for the year we are 400 basis above that so company is operating at a much higher level in manufacturing efficiency and the baseline number of 48 to 50 has been surpassed in one particular quarter if it becomes 55 that is not really i wouldn't recommend uh, that that is the new benchmark okay so and how should we look at it going forward i think anything about 52 would be a very acceptable number and uh, that is you know a number that is uh, optimal because um, that takes into account the high capacity utilization spreading the fixed cost over a large number of products uh, management of both uh, raw materials and all other costs associated with manufacture okay okay so thank you thank you
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Meer Dabania from Ambit Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I have uh, one question. Uh, it was uh, so we've seen uh, other building material companies catering to a wider uh, basket of products, including your uh, one of your closest competitors who has kind of ventured under a lighting front. So since we have like a huge profile of crash of around 700 crores, uh, are we looking to maybe look at edges and this? Are we to looking at it? Uh, and can we see something on that front in the next couple of years or so? See, currently there are no plans uh, or no proposal in front of the board to uh, diversify and especially diversification into unrelated areas, you know, lighting and electrical goods or even white goods are all unrelated businesses. They are like a decision to be taken independent of the current business. And many of these sectors, I'm not talking about any particular company or business, but are very crowded marketplaces where margins are much lower than what we are used to on, in our current businesses. So till any business achieves a certain ROC threshold, even on paper, we don't want to you know, even evaluate such an opportunity. So currently there is no such evaluation going on, but uh, let's see if we keep on expanding our current two main businesses, first through a brownfield and a greenfield venture, and maybe there's some inorganic opportunities in those businesses as well. Got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you for my video. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Fana from Equity Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning, sir, and uh, congratulations on a uh, very good set of numbers. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand on uh, the incremental uh, dealer uh, distributor uh, addition that you have done in. Uh, FI 23 versus let's say three years, uh, uh, three or four years uh, before. So, uh, can you just uh, share how uh, the dealer and distributor uh, addition uh, has been a focus area for the company? So, I'll give you some numbers. The dealers uh, in March 22 were 4260, which um, in March 23 have become 5462. And the retailers were around 11,300, which are now around 14,600. But at the same time, the size of uh, large dealers have grown. So large dealers uh, are anything between 20 to 40 crores in top line. That is the revelation of the last two, three years. That uh, being a dealer in sanitary wear is a very profitable business, allowing them cash flow to expand geographically, keep more sales people in, increase OPEX and CAPEX at their end, at the retail end and the dealer end. They, some of our dealers have large warehouses, large inventory of their own. So what we are seeing is the large dealers will continue to expand and that is going to be our focus. So making sure a 5 crore dealer becomes a 15 crore dealer, I think over the next two, three years, that is going to be the focus. Okay, sir. And uh, sir, uh, uh, is it uh, uh, can we say that uh, tier two and three cities are uh, seeing better growth uh, for you versus let's say three or four years before? There are all different markets for different products, you know. And uh, tier three cities, uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago, was a market for inexpensive products or affordable products. Not anymore. So tier two and tier three towns are now consumers of also luxury products. So for us, uh, we are uh, not really that um, bothered about where our sales go, but I would tell you something that dealers in tier two and three towns have uh, a larger footprint. They have better um, relationships with plumbers, civil contractors, architects, and other influencers. So their ability to sway a customer in those towns is much higher than in a tier one town. And in tier one towns, uh, MNCs are fully focused on tier one markets. So our focus is uh, across all three markets. As you can see, even our share of sales in tier one markets is increasing. Right, sir. And uh, sir, any guidance on uh, EBITDA margins uh, for next two years? Uh, that is FI 24 and 25. 
So we had predicted 50 to 75 basis over one year, and uh, we are already at uh, 103 basis for the year. So I think uh, I would say we have achieved what was to be achieved in two years in one year. Even maintaining the 17.96 number would be a great number to have with other income, and 15.88 without other income would be a great number to have for FY24. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Dhananjay from ASK Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. <clears throat> hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just wanted to ask you, sir, what would be a market share in both uh, uh, faucet and sanitary and a market uh, like a position also? You see, Dhananjay, for us to give out any number which is anecdotal would not be correct because we don't have any third party agency like a you know, Technopack or someone making out a report on yeah. relative market share. Huh. So we are the largest player in sanitary wear without doubt and the second largest player in faucet wear and uh, growing much faster than all the players behind us in faucet wear. So incremental market share, which is a more relevant statistic, hmm. is the highest in Sarah's case in faucet wear. And in sanitary wear, we are just guarding our number one position. And just to have an idea, how far would the number two, if you had to be, I mean, ballpark or near, any idea what would number two be in that sense? See, it's difficult for me to talk about any other company. Okay. And uh, uh, see the num the good growth we've seen in our numbers, would this be an industry-wide phenomena or are we seeing some market share gains? If you remember, during our Q3 call, there were a lot of questions on uh, volatility of demand during Diwali and post Diwali. And you sure. expect that we did not see that kind of volatility in our offtake. The same thing happened in Q4. So different industry players have different dynamics and pricing decisions that they make. In our case, the focus on B2C segment and just focusing on the product rather than any other intangibles has uh, made our uh, numbers work. And we have really come out of the typical housing and interest rate cyclicality. Sure. Okay. Okay. And I guess then a thirdly, last question. Uh, just any possible breakup between that? How much of our revenues come from, let's say, metros or tier one versus tier two, tier three? Yes. I'll just give you that number. Tier one is thirty-one percent of sales. Okay. Tier two is twenty-two percent of sales, and tier three is forty-seven percent of sales. Okay, and this is on a combined basis, right? Yes, and exports are for the quarter 1% of sales, and uh, for the year it's between 1% and 2% of sales. Okay, fine. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Udit Gajiwala from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, sir. Thank you for taking up my question. So just following up on the previous participant, uh, given that the market, uh, you mentioned that the other players have taken price hikes for last two quarters now. So there could be an element that, you know, this is since it is a volume driven for us, uh, there could be some element of market share gain. Is it a possibility? Other players took uh, price rises in October, November 22, which we did not at that time. <laughs> And our manufacturing efficiencies have beaten the effect of both inflation and RM changes and changes in labor and any other costs. So that we were happy to pass on those benefits to the consumer. And of course, we also knew that that will increase our market share. So that's exactly what we followed. The last price hike we had was May 22, almost right. 12 months ago. Understood. Understood. And sir, and secondly, your margins, you mentioned that, you know, even if at these levels you will be uh, comfortable, but given that the RM pressure is coming down and with a premiumization basket going up, could we see, you know, that you, you being conservative maybe in terms of, you know, maintaining your margin guidance or uh, we might see some 50, 70 basis points uptick? Is it a possibility? Well, we had uh, expected 50 to 75. We delivered 103. So... Um, you know, that is something that we have delivered for two years in one year. We'll be happy with these margins if they are stable. And what you said, the RM is cooling off. 
margins uh, may increase with uh, if 350 400 crores of sales are added this year as well so we'll wait for those things to play out before you know guiding okay and this last question if i may squeeze in sanitary where given that you know now we are moving more towards outsource with the cap capacity do we see some uh, squeezing of growth uh, in sanitary wear or you know outsource may increase and that's why even margins could be at here so outsource you see we work with uh, let's say there are 50 60 plants in the country we work with only 10 12 who meet our quality parameters so currently within those 10 12 there is no capacity constraint and uh, even our in house manufacturing the strategy we have avoid, uh, adopted is to make sure all complicated products are made in house and uh, products which were previously made in house are sent to outsourcing partners freeing up fresh capacity to take in newer products so it's a mix and it's a evolving mix of which product to make in house and which product to take outside currently Got there is no uh, capacity constraint both in the in-house capacity and from our outsourcing partners and the proof of that is the inventory days you know the, the sector always had a problem of inventory and availability and we've had eight straight quarters of no uh, element of lost sales so the inventory levels are at an optimum level right now Got it. And lastly, on KFX, you said that 24 will be how much, uh, excluding your brownfield, maybe? So I'll just give you some numbers. For FY23-24, a total of 34.78 crores is planned, of which 11 crores will be sanitary wear automation, 4 crores faucet wear automation, 7 crores customer touch points, 7 crores land and building at the current manufacturing facility and 4 crores in logistics and IT. And I can also give you what was achieved uh, last year. Okay. We had a budget last year outside of uh, the 69 crores uh, for the faucet where uh, brownfield of 24.7 crores of which 20.49 was spent and they were spent in 6 crores for sanitary wear automation, 3 crores for faucet wear automation, 4 crores on customer touch points, 2.5 crores on land and building in our current facility and 5 crores on logistics and IT. Thank you. Thank you Aish for answering all the rest. Thank you. A request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. For a follow-up question, requesting join the queue again. The next question is from Lan Ushranik from LIC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thanks for the question. Uh, Shranik, sorry, but there's a lot of static from your line. Hello, is it better? Uh, no, sir, it's still the same. May I request to speak, speak through the handset? Sure. Is it better now? Yes, go ahead. So, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, so basically, I wanted to understand that uh, uh, we are expecting a 17 to 18 percent revenue CAGR for the next three years. So, I understand uh, real driver for our sales, but uh, we are already one of the best the companies in terms of distribution, uh, as we our distribution is quite deep in tier two, tier three, four cities. So what will be the key driver for growth uh, uh, from here? Like what has structurally changed for the industry and for us? At Sera, we don't need to do anything differently. We just have to execute in the same manner that we have been doing for the past seven, eight years. So that includes uh, enhancing product technology, maintaining the same product quality, and at the price that it's made available and this distributed logistics, distributed inventory availability. So we have to continue to do the same things we have done and not do anything differently. The demand from all three tier one, two and three towns is available. The replacement demand, home improvement demand is for real. And the industry is expanding in faucet where the conversion from unorganized to organized is taking place. In sanitary where the industry size was so small 
that size is increasing dramatically. Oh, got it. And uh, sir, uh, can you throw some light on how the other large private players in the likes of Kohler, Parivar, Jaguar have performed relative to us? Uh, and say on that, secondly, uh, as they are increasing the penetration in smaller cities, are we facing increased competition from these brands? See, the competitive intensity was never low in this industry. Whether you talk about the four large companies in India or seven, eight MNCs, the competitive intensity uh, for dealers, for retailers, and for customers was always very high. But uh, for me to talk about any other company will be very difficult. But you'll find that Sarah has been outperforming all other players in the industry on any of the metrics, whether it's product, technology, pricing, placement, and of course, all that translates into investor return and financial metrics. And most importantly, free cash flow. That is one of the most important uh, focuses of this company. Got it, sir. And sir, basically, um, just on again the cash questions, so currently our ROC is around 26% with such high cash on books, right? So going ahead, do you have any plans to better utilize the capital that is available on our books around 650 crore in, in investments, which can improve our ROC and ROE? Currently, they are passed in safe instruments, and you rightly said ROC is already high. If you take away the uh, liquid cash from the capital employed, then that ROC number will dramatically increase. So one of the steps that have been taken is to increase the dividend payments. Over the last two years, the average dividend payment, which used to be 17, 18% of PAT, is now 31, 32% of PAT. And PAT has also more than doubled the average PAT of the last uh, 10 years was between 100 and 110 crores. This year is 209 crores. So both the absolute number and the dividend payout ratio all have dramatically changed. And having this availability of cash has provide us, provided us an additional flexibility. So both the brownfield and greenfield capex, we can uh, we have been able to do without uh, the need to raise any resources, or without the need to change in our business practices to bring in more cash flow. Thank you, Shrenik. Sorry to interrupt you. I'll proceed to join the queue again. The next question is from the line of Sonali Salgaukar from Jeffries India. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. So I, my first question is related to the industry. I understand you cannot share your market share data, but can you please give us the updated numbers of the market size and organized proportion of sanitary wear faucets and tiles, please? Again, Sonali, it will be anecdotal data, the data we collect from our sales force and various offices. So. Again, that is not something that will be correct to give to any outside uh, community. No problem, sir. Understand. So my second question is uh, about uh, the uh, tile industry in Morbi. Any update on the competition emerging over there? Uh, so are exports on track or are you seeing a slowdown in the exports? And are you seeing them uh, coming with a higher competition in the domestic market? Sonali, you have been a regular on a call for many years. You know the commentary we've been making about tiles, that the tile industry is going through a very difficult uh, phase and it will continue to remain that way because of significant overcapacity in the industry and none of the players having any pricing power. So that remains. And uh, exports have not grown in the same pace that they were growing for the last uh, four or five years. That, that has resulted in... Uh, a significant glut in the domestic industry with prices not moving upwards, even demand is more or less stagnant. So the number of plants kept on mushrooming, there is no barriers to entry for SME entrepreneurs to put up a plant for a very small amount. And uh, that that's a over fragmentation of the industry, which will take a few years to sort out understand so and my last question is uh, could you enumerate what is the approximate average price hike that Sarah has taken in fi23 across sanitary wear faucets and tile 
segment separately please so i give you some numbers um in fy23 there was only one price hike and that was in may 2022 3% in sanitary wear and 5% in faucet wear and before that the last price hike was in november 21 so in calendar year 22 uh, there was only one price hike and in financial year 23 there was only one price hike there was a price rationalization exercise uh, earlier this year in calendar year 23 which resulted in a 50 basis point increase in price hike because we went for a uniform mrp across all products and all states irrespective of the freight costs understand sir and none in tiles right tiles there just too many products you know i'll just give you some uh, information on tiles uh, now uh, the soluble salt commoditized tiles is only 4% of sales for sir the rest is uh, 40% is uh, gvt 21% is uh, double charged wall tiles are 24% and other paving and outdoor tiles are 12% so there is little bit of pricing power in gvt and double charge and uh, the commoditized version we have restricted ourselves to just 4% of uh, our overall tile sales where we have ongoing commitments got it sir thank you that's all from my side thank you, thank you. next question is from manav akash from uti mutual fund please go ahead Akash, may I request to unmute your line? Please, sir, and go to the question, please. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Uh, hi. Good morning, uh, Ayush. Uh, many congratulations on great set of numbers. Uh, just had a few questions. One is, uh, uh, how much has been the decline in brass prices, and are we uh, planning to cut uh, uh, MRP or let's say? The realization of faucet wear uh, uh, to ensure that uh, 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 I mean uh, to stay ahead of competition. I mean uh, competition would uh, I mean would competition be uh, I mean uh, uh, taking price cut in faucet wear. See, brass. I'll give you the RM behavior of brass and Zamac for the full year first. There was a 10% increase in brass prices for 12 months. FY23, of which 5.12% increased in Q4, and Zamac, which is used to make handles of single lever, there was a 24% increase for 12 months, of which 7% increased in Q4. Despite that, we didn't have to take any price hikes since May. So you can understand that we are passing all uh, all the gains made in efficiency to the consumer and also absorbing any changes in RM increases. So that that was as far as uh, FY23 is concerned. Even if these prices cool off, which they most likely will, there is no proposal or there is no past history or trend of decreasing prices or decreasing MRP. Sure. And uh, usually, if let's say uh, raw material price is correct, then usually discounts increase or we take a price cut uh, in MRP terms. Normally, the brands like Sarah, which have pricing power, don't have to change any behavior with changes in RM. So we don't have to increase uh, discounts or decrease MRP. Yes, sometimes there are combo offers, but that is in the regular course of business, uh, not related to changes in M raw materials. So the whole point of spending the kind of money we do on advertising, publicity, creating a brand, creating the technology and spending so much on technology and the shop floor is to make sure that our MRP doesn't move along with any kind of RM or any other cost or demand factors. Um, sure. And uh, apart from, I mean, uh, so uh, so our beta margins uh, uh, this quarter reduced by about 270 to 280 bips as compared to last year same quarter. Uh, once 
uh, one factor uh, was uh, increase in ad spend but any other factors that led to this decrease in margin see if you look at uh, ebitda without other income is 16.04 versus 18.78 and the ad spend increase of 17 crores for the quarter is if you add that to the ebitda numbers it increases it to more than last year's ebitda margin other than that there was no other change all other costs were in line with uh, revenues Okay, uh, understood. Sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ayush. Thank you. And all the best. Thank you. Next question is from line of Omkar from Free Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned this to several participants. Just wanted to know uh, what's management thinking on, see, a buyback in this regard, since you have lots of cash. Just wanted to management thinking on this. See, we recognize that a buyback is a very tax efficient way of distributing cash to shareholders, and uh, we are al alive to those uh, possibilities. But we have not um, taken any kind of proposal to the board on buyback. However, the board is uh, always keen to distribute more to shareholders, and that's why you're seeing a 18 crore rupee. Uh, distribution becoming you know 65 66 crores this year and uh, last year it was about 46 crores so that's uh, one of the ways of distributing cash other than that uh, buyback is not really been evaluated at the board level so far correct but is the management open to buyback or uh, like what's the thinking just wanted to know See, that is a decision that uh, i think uh, after all the capex uh, brownfield greenfield of the company play out, that is another decision that can be evaluated seriously. But currently, there is no such proposal. Okay. Uh, and the question was on the land acquisition, uh, which we are supposed to do, I guess, in the next six months. So just wanted to know, when can the Greenfield project, uh, it will be commenced, and uh, what would the addition to the existing uh, thing? and how much it can contribute to the over, like how much sales it can add once it starts up, it becomes operational and working at 100% capacity. So the plan is to complete the land acquisition and approval within this calendar year and uh, most likely by October, November. That will cost around 25 crores. Another 100 crores will be spent on plant machinery and technology in the sanitary ware facility which will take, let's say, 18, 20 months post all land acquisition and approvals. And uh, the initial capacity will be modular. Initial capacity could be 12 lakh units and 12 lakh pieces per year. And the top line will be close to 300 crores. So asset turns for that will be between uh, 2.25 and 3. As far as uh, the faucet ware facility is concerned, we have almost... Uh, uh, seeing the end of that brownfield expansion, the cost is 69 crores. The addition is 1 lakh pieces per month or 12 lakh pieces per year to take the capacity to 48 lakh pieces a year. And uh, asset turns, because it was brownfield and there was no land cost, etc., will be around uh, three and a half times. So, as far as the sanitary wear is concerned, uh, it will take another two and a half to three years to commence the facility, right? So 18 to 20 months after the zero date, and the zero date will be set after the land uh, acquisition is over and approvals are in place. So we'll wait for the zero date uh, date to be set by the end of the year. Okay. Until then, uh, whatever you are comfortable with the outsourcing level and whatever the uh, capacity utilization around 115 to 18 percent, you are comfortable with that. That's right. And to meet the need. Our inventory date. Okay, and this is enough. This is fine with you guys uh, to meet the existing demand as well as the future demand. That is correct. That is correct. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll hand the conference over to the management for closing comments.
Thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone for attending this call and for showing interest in Sera Sanitaryware. Sera remains positive that its strong positioning in the industry and improving macros would help it deliver steady and consistent growth going forward. Should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to reach out to me or CDR India. Thank you once again for taking the time to join the call and see you all next quarter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Sarah Sanitary Wear Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.